They can read one of them nasty, dirty, disgusting books. You know what I'm saying? That's what people want. They want to feed that need instead of feeding their best part of their personality. They don't want to read nothing uplifting because they don't want to get better. Gucci saturation. This is bad. Oh, sorry, not... whoever you are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't. Sorry, sir, ma'am. Okay. But this is this is bad. And you is Y O U. By the way, see, this is edited. You know, there's no other books. Even the best erotica doesn't have nude women on them. Um, and if they do, it's suggestive. Nothing is suggestive. It's all just in your face, breast and ass, and it's all us. And I find it um, insulting and very sexist and racist. It's a different sexuality and sensuality. Sensuality to me is something totally different than just exuding sex. Sensuality is a whole total part of a person's being. It's not just the sex. It's the romance, it's the affection, it's all of that combined. So I don't feel like I need to have those kind of covers to sell books and I obviously don't need right. them to, <laughs> to sell them. I mean, sometimes less is more. You take a movie like Scarface, Departed, Goodfellas, Boys in the Hood, American Gangster. I mean, the stuff that's happening in those films, isn't that gangster? Wouldn't that be considered gangster? The mafia boss beating somebody with a bat, that's gangster, right? And then you add the word fiction. What does fiction mean? Fake, right? So, street fiction, gangster fiction in books, street fiction, gangster fiction in films and movies is the same thing. These people complaining about these writers in this new genre that's coming up. They're the same people that's gonna break their neck, spin over 3,000 times, spin over backwards, and go run out to go see Denzel's new movie, American Gangster, to watch him blow out somebody's brains on camera. Say hello to my little friend! always talking about politically incorrect and political correctness and what is acceptable except when it comes to your particular group that folk dog them then all of a sudden you ain't got no more tolerance right you see what i'm saying so that african-american people often are the acceptable the acceptable price to be paid for especially powerful white men to have their freedom of speech um we on right now, we on Gavit Place. Right. How you doing? Oh, right. Welcome to the field. Right. Welcome to the field. Right. When it is JMB. Do you have a positive message in all of your books that you write? Absolutely. But first I gotta say that I totally disagree with this genre dumbing down on you, our readers, period. It's not literature. First of all, I don't even read a lot of fiction. I read a, I read a lot of non-fiction because I'm not trying to deposit garbage in my brain. Is, is this like good reading? Is this like No, not necessarily. It's to be, not to give to kids. Really? Awesome. It's not really. Because it, it glorifies drug life, street, hustlers, and stuff like that. So I have a 14-year-old daughter, so I know. So you, would, you wouldn't let her read no, any of those type no, of books? No, no. Wow. Not till she's ready. I really would say around 30 and up because we already experienced most of that stuff out there as coming up as teenagers and stuff. I would say around that age. So just like with video games or TV shows and everything, um, you know, kids should be monitored. This this genre, I mean, like these particular books that she's writing, these, these are adult novels. But should there be books that are um, for urban youth read that they can relate to? I mean, let's face it. You grew up on Prince Street. You know what I mean? You're not going to relate to Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. I mean, you know. I mean, Harry Potter's great adults read it and all, but I never knew any warlocks that lived on, uh, you know, pennies in court. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, I'll make it easy for you. Pull the Muhammad episode now. Okay, I'll listen to you. I don't see this thing going anywhere. No, I really right. don't. I really don't. I really oh. see it for the convicts to buy it, uh, like ours. You know, it's, it's just, it, it's almost like you're part of the in crowd if you talk about urban litany. Let's 
started her own publishing company. Her own her publishing company is called Triple Crown Publications. Triple like Crown? Triple Crown Publications. Okay. It's like one of the biggest street lit publishers, independent publishers out there now. She published, she got like over 20 some authors now. Uh -huh. yeah. I am just someone who was humble and obedient to what God had called me to do. And so today I live my life having sold over one million books, translated into two different languages. You know, they follow a pretty typical pattern. Like, you'll see a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of legs, there's a lot of body, and you see a lot of bodies where heads cut off, I don't know why. But, you know, those books continue to sell, and there's been a lot of successful books using that strategy, so can't complain there. And I love the feedback that I get, which is always really pretty much positive. Um, they, my novels, you know, not only, you know, people take different things from them, but, you know, I have strong messages in every single one of them. And the most important thing for me um, is that my readers get those messages. There wasn't a whole lot of guys trying to be authors of this. I was still like a weirdo, like, yo, right. you writing book. My boys was like, yo, you can't write no. Then I started doing it, then they're like, yo, I got a book idea for you. You know what right, I mean? Right, that right, kind right. of thing. So now it's like the example has been set that you can make a living and, and become popular. And, you know, you get your hustle on with the book trace and everybody want to do books. You know, 50 Cent got a whole G unit book division. G unit books. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, wow, you know, now they all the guys want to come out with books. You know, Snoop Dogg got a book, uh, uh, Dr. Dre got a book, yeah, Kanye West stuff. got two yeah, books yeah. out. You won't know when a sentence is dramatic and incorrect, when there's no, when there are inconsistencies and, and things just don't add up. Right. It's like, you know, it's like you can't even tell the difference do I feel better about my son, my mama, my daddy, my brother, my neighbor, or do I just want to find out, bang, I'll get rid of my brother, or, you know, because he wronged me. I want to know what is redeeming about that. And if you think for a minute that that's going to be better five years from now, that's why we're in the position. That's why we are complaining. That's why Trevor White said what he had to say, because now we are turning on ourselves. Yes. That's what I hate about that shit. Thank you. You have traditional writers stating that this is not art, this is not, this is trash. You know what I mean? They want to read about things that's contemporary. Okay, shoot, so be it. I'm from Harlem. I am an abandoned child. My mother was a whore. And the things that I saw through these eyes, no child should have to witness or experience. So am I wrong for writing about my life that I saw? I'm writing about a bigger fence in this urban mountain. It's not street fiction, but I'm writing about a project in the street fiction. Look at Walter Mosley. Walter Mosley talks about the ghettos of Watts in Fifth Ward, Texas, and just different ghettos of LA, but they don't call Walter Mosley stuff street fiction. I think more like 13, 14-ish. And you know, I, th I think that girls should, well kids should read read something. We shouldn't be mad at what they're reading as long as it's not too raunchy. Canada and the West Indies and Africa and Europe, where we are on the planet, we gotta understand that we are a global people. And reading should be non-stop and it should be as important to us as eating and breathing. That's what I look at. You can't do any work if you don't know where you come from. San Jose. I'm speaking for folks from the hood because I'm from the hood. You know what I mean? Just because I've written eight books, just because I speak around the country, travel around the world, own property, own a business, I never forget where I come from. I won't, I'm not going to categorize street lit or urban fiction as, as unable to do those sorts of things, but it's about the craft that the writer brings to it, the, the years of, of, of working on, on, on the use of language and the use of imagery and all those things. And to be honest, I don't see a whole lot of that in the street lit that is, is comes across my desk with it, I see it in bookstores. Yeah, I really is what my mom read, you know what I'm saying? For real, I, she read Tara Miller. She read Michael Bazin. That's urban literature. That's that's urban literature. That's about the urban literature. These kids are reading hip-hop fiction, you know, and it's wider. It's got erotica, booty call star 69. If you read it, it's straight up hip-hop. Every iconic reference made in the novel is about something hip-hop. People have different tastes in, in, in music, movies, 
and people have different tastes in literature, so I don't see why it should be a difference of what we write and why, why they singling us out. We all need to be pulling each other up instead of breaking each other down, you know what I'm saying? Anybody, anybody that's black to sit here and have a problem with another person, another black person out here after everything we've been through this we can so forget. Mm -hmm. Only 30 years ago, Martin Luther King died. We were riding in the 70s. We was tearing this shit down. Factories closed down in the 70s. Niggas had nothing till they had coke and fucking hip hop. So stop acting like that shit's not real. It's like, they say, why don't you pick up a book? Y'all young folks, y'all y'all wanna listen to music, listen to rap, pick up a book. There's nothing out there that I wanna read. As soon as there's something out there for them to read, all this bullshit out. Just look what you're reading. Look what you're reading. It's like you can't win for lose. Oh, man. Motherfuckers gotta wake up and understand like what it is. It's the these motherfucking people looking at urban fiction talking about what the fuck is wrong with it. You need to, you know what I'm saying, put it under a microscope and see why it's like that. Come through the hood and see why we writing about that kind of shit. See the fucking dilapidated conditions that we living in. Kids getting bit by rats. Motherfuckers selling crack in the project. Come look at that shit and understand why we angry. And then maybe you say, Instead of me buying a $500 billion missile to blow up Iraq, let me get everybody new appliances in the projects over here. Let me redo this project like I'm doing all the projects downtown. You know what I'm saying? And try to uplift these people. Let me create some motherfucking jobs or some trade studies or some type of program for these people. You know what I'm saying? You taking these shit, you taking some of you, you taking everything. We ain't got no outlets. So what we gonna do? We're gonna take it to the hood, nigga, and we're gonna get it how we live. We're gonna get it how we get it. We're not for urban literature, and, and basically somebody just coming from the heart. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I'd be thinking of that. My question is, like, are you actually out there working with young people? Are you actually out there relating to them? You know what I'm saying? Do you understand them? Are you just saying, oh, they lost, they're confused, their music is whack, what they're reading is whack? You can't do that. You can't do that. But remember, in, in order to dumb down, you gotta assume that people started up. You know what I mean? Yeah. If folk not reading at all, then all of a sudden they start reading some stuff that folks consider dumb. The reading itself is an important thing. Because then they can go on the ball when Richard Wright, Malcolm X biography and so forth, you see. If not reading nothing at all, then ain't nothing to dumb down, they all read that. Now if they started reading Toni Morrison and end up reading that, that's some dumbing down. That's some serious dumbing down. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's like reading, you know, you move from Curtis to Soldier Boy. We love both of them. That's dumbing down. <laughs> For me, the question is not simply whether urban literature will survive. The question is, how does urban literature play a role in facilitating greater learning and deeper engagement with truth? And at that level, it becomes serious. At the end of the day, um, black people, black life, inner city life is the last thing to be documented.